Hello and welcome static students again. Um, so today we're going to be solving another trust problem. We're going to be using the method of joints to find forces AD, AF, and DF. So we're going to start off by looking at those joints. We're going to be at joint A and joint D. Um, right away we can tell that we have no knowns at those joints and it's going to be extremely hard to even try to attack this without any unknowns. Actually, it's basically impossible. We could start at joint F and work our way to joint D, but again, joint F has too many unknowns. So what can we do? Well, I think the best thing to do in this situation is try to find these reactions at A and B, and that should help us when we're solving joint A. So let's go ahead and start solving for those react support reactions. So we know already that B is going to be just a Y because it's a roller. And we know that A is a pin, so it should have an A, a Y and an X force. Okay. So let's go ahead and start by solving A of X. A of X, right away we can tell that it's going to be zero Y because there's no other X forces. Um, we'll move on to trying to find A of Y or B of Y. Now, we can't do sum of forces just because we have two unknowns and that we can't solve it. So we have to do your favorite, a moment. So we're going to go ahead and do moment at A. Sum of forces at moment at A is equal to zero. Okay. And we have that 2.3 kilonewtons times that distance, which is going to be kind of hard to find. So we're going to try to find that distance. Okay. Um, one thing I see right away is that this right here is a triangle, right? That triangle right there is four and the height is three. Um, now right there at point D, it's over here. It's another triangle and they share the same angle. We'll call angle alpha and this smaller triangle the length is two, and therefore, because of similar triangles, we know that the height's gonna be 1.5. Why? Because four divided by two gives us two, and three divided by two gives us 1.5. Similar triangles. Um, now, we are gonna find uh, alpha just because it's gonna be very useful coming up right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and solve that. We'll do, we we'll use a big triangle, it doesn't really matter. So alpha is equal to tan of 3 over 4, and if we put that into our calculators, so I hope everybody's following along and doing it on the calculators, so we should get, and this should be inverse, so should, we should get 36.869, that's our angle, that's alpha, okay? Now, we already know that the distance from A to about here is two. We're just missing this X right there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're just gonna draw that triangle, the ADF triangle, right? And we already know that this is two. We know this is alpha, and we'll call this angle up here beta. Now in the problem it already states that that I joined D, it's at 90 degrees. So by logic, if we have this angle here be beta, then this angle on the other side is going to be alpha. And we have another little triangle. So now let's, let's just look at the right triangle, the one on the right, and that's alpha. And we know the height is 1.5 because we found that up here, okay? And we're looking for x. Oh, what happened? We're looking for x. So we'll just do tan of alpha is equal to opposite. Okay, so 1.5 times tan of alpha is equal to x, and x is equal to 1.125. Okay, so now we found um, this x, which is 1.125. So our distance from the 2.3 to a, it's going to be 3.125, okay? And we're going to say that clockwise is positive and counterclockwise is negative. So therefore, this 
is going to go clockwise, so it's positive. Okay, so let me just go ahead and erase some of this. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite that angle up here because it's going to be useful in a bit. Actually, no, it's not. We're not going to be used anymore. Okay, so now we need the 1.2. It's going to be 1.2 kilonewtons times that distance. Now, I think that we can all agree that the distance from A to B is 8 meters. And is if we see what's happening here, this triangle is actually, it's a, it's, it's a symmetrical triangle. Okay, so then that means that we know that this distance right here from G to B is the same distance as A to F. So we can just write this out as 8 minus 3.125. And that's as well going clockwise. And finally, we have our BY times that 8, and that's going counterclockwise. So let me just clear this up a little bit so we can all see what's going on. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and solve for BOY. So BOY is negative 2.3 kilonewtons times 3.125 minus that 1.2 times 8 minus 3.125 divided by 8. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Okay, BOY, we should get about 1.63 kilonewtons going up. Okay, and finally, we're going to solve the A of Y. So sum of forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. We're going to have negative 2.3 kilonewtons minus the 1.2 kilonewtons plus that BY that we just found. Oh, and the A of Y. So A of Y is equal to 1.87 kilonewtons going up. Okay. And we solved those reactions already. So I'm going to go ahead and just put those up here. Our A of Y is equal to 1.87 kilonewtons up. A is equal to 0. And B of Y is equal to one point eight. 1.63 okay now let's go ahead and just erase this real quick because we need some space okay now that we found those reactions we're ready to start solving this truss okay so we're going to start at joint A just because that is the joint that we have one unknown or two unknowns, two knowns and two unknowns. So, joint A, okay? We know that A of Y is pointing up and we know that A of X is zero, so we're not gonna put it on there. And we're just left with two other members that we still have to find the direction. A, D and A of F. Okay. Well, this is an equilibrium, so we have to know that if we have stuff going up, we need stuff going down. So we can determine which direction AD is facing. And because we have stuff going up, we need stuff coming down. So AD is going to be in compression. Now we can also figure out which way F is pointing. And AD is going to give us stuff going left, so we definitely need stuff going right to make it an equilibrium. So A of F is going to be going to our right. Good, now we're just gonna solve. So we're gonna do sum of forces in the y is equal to zero. We're gonna do a of y is positive minus, now remember, this right here is our alpha. Remember our alpha? Oh, I didn't write it down. But alpha is gonna be the 36.869. I think that's what it was, yes. So that's where alpha comes in plain place. So alpha, is very important here because that's going to give us our component of that AD. So AD is going to be sine or cosine. Well, it's opposite, and the angle's actually down here, right? So it's going to be sine of alpha is equal to zero. AD 
is equal to a of y divided by sine of alpha. a of d is equal to 3.116 kilonewtons. And what is that? Is that in tension or compression? Well, we already stated that a of d is pointing into the joint, so therefore it is in compression. Okay. Now we have to find a of f. So we'll do sum of force in the x. Okay. And again, a of d. And we're going to use the sum of the x component, so therefore it's going to be cosine of alpha. And it's pointing left, so we're going to call that negative. A of f is positive because it's going right. And a of f is equal to a of d cosine of alpha. So our a of f is going to be... Um, 2.49 kilonewtons to the right or in tension because it's pointing away from the joint. Okay? So now we got to find our D of F. So we're going to go ahead and move from, we just finished point A, I mean joint A, we're going to move over to joint D. Okay? So now we got to do joint D. And we're going to have that A of D, right? And remember, if it's in compression, it's always going to be in compression. And then we have this other member and this other member. Now, a trick that you can do here is you can tilt this, this, um, this joint for it to look a little like this. Right? And this is going to be our A of D. This is going to be our D of C. And this is our D of F. So now this, if we tilt it, right? Because we just tilted it, we know that this is horizontal right here, the A and the C, D. So we just tilted it over. Okay. And now it's a little easier to do because now we just know that the sum of the, oh, that the sum of the forces in the Y, oh, in the X, right? A, D is going right, so that's positive, minus D, C is equal to zero. We know that D of C is equal to AD, and we know that DC is equal to 3.116 kilonewtons in compression. And finally, we have sum of forces in the Y. And we know that that's a zero force member, right? Because it doesn't have any other force. So therefore, B of F is zero. And now, Let's go again. It was asking just to find A, D, A, F, and D of F. So our A, D is 3.12 kilonewtons because I'm rounding and I was in compression. A of F is equal to 2.49 kilonewtons, and that's in tension. And finally, D of F is equal to zero. And that right there is our solution. I hope this was simple to understand. It was just a little trick in the beginning trying to find the distance from A to F, but we were able to figure that out with some trick. So thank you.